Hi, good morning everybody. Um, today I'm going to do a video, uh, and this is my video on the the 10 most essential tools that you need for doing uh, colour pencil art. Uh, and this is kind of just my opinion. This is what I have picked up from watching all the different artists that are about there that uh, do colour pencil art. Uh, some of these things are going to seem really, really, you know, obvious. Uh, some maybe not so much, but... Um, I'm just going to go through the, the 10 different things that I find are essential for colour pencil art and um, then if you've got any questions or anything like that you can always leave them down in the comments section. So the first thing and probably the most uh, obvious is the, the colour pencils themselves. A lot of people will say this that have got into uh, colour pencil art that the quality of the colour pencil is essential. So. Um, only you can determine what, what is the best pencil for you, whether you're going to have uh, oil based pencils or wax based pencils. But something like the, the Faber Castell Polychromos is a, a great pencil. Uh, the Karen Dice Luminance is, a, is another pencil. I've done a, a full review on these ones uh, if you want to check that out. Uh, a little bit more expensive than the, the Faber Castell, but nevertheless, an excellent coloured pencil. Then there's other pencils such as. Uh, like the, the Prismacolor pencils um, and also there's a fantastic range of pencils that Derwent do as well uh, Derwent Drawn Pencil is one of them uh, uh, along with the Derwent Artist pencils as well that I've reviewed and I'll also leave a um, I'll also leave a link to the review I've done that, of that so the colour pencils that's one of the most obvious points in this. Uh, the next most obvious really is the, the paper. Now it is really important that you get good quality paper. Uh, these are just some of the papers that I use. So the first one is, um, it's a water, I know it's a watercolour paper but a lot of colour pencil artists like using watercolour paper. Now this is um, a hot press which means that it's uh, not as grainy, it's not as uh, textured as like uh, the, the cold press. Uh, watercolors uh, it's quite a smooth texture but it's uh, it's still got enough tooth tooth on it to um, take a, a good few layers and what's also really good about this is if you're using a uh, blend and solvents like zested or something like that this paper is going to hold that really quite well uh, some of the other papers that you can get are um, toned colored papers so this is Strathmore uh, Toned Grey, this is their uh, 400 series. Um, then we have the Toned Tan paper, uh, again Strathmore's 400 series. This is a, a really nice paper for, for doing, um, especially whenever you're doing something that involves a lot of white. Uh, Strathmore Bristol, uh, this is a, a slightly thicker paper. Um, quite smooth as well doesn't have a lot of tooth on it or anything like that but it's a it's a really nice paper to work with nice and stiff and sturdy and then uh, probably the newest out of them all is uh, Strathmore's color pencil paper now a lot of color pencil artists don't really like this but um, I found it works well with the stuff that I do so um, I like using this there are others other really good papers out there that you can get uh, Fabiano do uh, an, a really good cold press, um, or sorry, hot press paper, as does Stonehenge. Uh, they do really nice papers as well. Uh, now the next thing that I'm going to show you is um, the er erasers. So there's a whole bunch of different erasers here that you can use. Let me just zoom in a little bit on this for you. Okay, so these are all the erasers. Now, these aren't really so much for getting rid of mistakes or anything like that. They're more for um, lifting colour off and doing highlights and stuff like that. The, the putty eraser is probably one of the most essential erasers that you're going to need. That's for just lifting off light, light colour and stuff like that. Then you've got your ordinary... Um, what is these like final rubbers or whatever they're called? Uh, they're quite good because you cut them off and they give you sharp edges and they they um, they give you good accurate 
uh, lifting off colour for like hair and stuff like that. Uh, one of the erasers that a lot of uh, colour pencil artists swear by is the um, is the electric eraser. This one here is from Derwent. It's uh, fantastic. You, you can get lots of refills. You just take the nib out. Sorry, look at me. Just take the nib out and you just replace the uh, the eraser like so. It just goes in there and then back into the and you're good to go. Uh, then there are these pencil erasers which are also very good. This one this one here is uh, from Faber Castell. I'm not too sure if you can see that. Um, this one here is from, from uh, Derwent. As you can see it's got a little brush on the end here um, for wiping away any residue. And then these ones here are probably my favourite. This is the Tombow range. Uh, this one is like a flat head. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that very well. Uh, and then this one here is probably the my favourite one. It's uh, very, very accurate. Just a very, very fine point lead. And because it's, uh, you know, it's retractable, um, you can just take a little bit out and it's still going to give you quite a firm um, eraser to work with. So that's the erasers. They are essential in my opinion. Uh, the next essential item are the sharpeners. Now there are loads of different sharpeners on the market and as bizarre as this is going to sound for a lot of you, each and every one of these different sharpeners works well, works better on certain pencils as opposed to some of the others. For example, this sharpener for me uh, works the best on my Caran Dash Luminance pencils. I don't know why, it, it just does. Uh, out of all the eraser, or sorry, sharpeners that I've used, this one, a little cheap metal one, uh, works best on my Prismacolor pencils. All the other sharpeners that I've used um, don't work at all with my Prismacolor pencils, including an electric sharpener that I have. Um, and then this little uh, metal one, again, uh, this little helix one, this works best on my uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos. So I have a, a sharpener for each pencil. This one gives you a, a very a much longer point. Um, I don't really use it as much because it seems to take quite a lot of the pencil away, so I, I don't use it as much. Um, I've included this in the sharpeners because a lot of people use this for uh, just refining the point on some of the pencils that they want. So uh, I've included this in the sharpeners. And then an X-Acto knife. Um, a lot of people use these instead of sharpeners, especially for the likes of the Prismacolor because Prism they, they have a very, very annoying um, ability of breaking all the time and it's really difficult to try and find uh, a tool that's going to sharpen prisma colors without them breaking all the time so a lot of people use these knives um, which is good so moving all that over to the side so the next thing that I'm going to suggest is um, pencil extenders now you can get lots and lots of different types of these but as you can see first and foremost these colour pencils, they're very expensive and so you want to get the most out of them and they can go down as low as this and you're obviously not going to be able to use that with just your hands so um, that's where a pencil extender would come in you put the colour pencil under the extender and you're good to go. Now a lot of people uh, can get around not buying these by um, like sellotaping another pencil onto the end of the the tiny pencil that you have so let me show you so like I don't know um, there we go some people would kind of attach the pencil on the end of another pencil with sellotape and that would do them uh, that, that's one way of doing it um, if you don't really want to spend the money then these two ones from uh, Derwent these are really good uh, extenders as well uh, they're, they're metal uh, one's bigger than the other so it, it allows you to um, 
put the extender on slightly thicker pencils as opposed to say like the Prismacolor which are much thinner. So the pencil extenders they are quite important. Uh, the next thing that is quite important is uh, ordinary pencils. Now if you're going to be doing a really nice drawing and stuff like that you're going to want to be using uh, a good quality pencil. Uh, so that you can do light sketch and stuff like that before you start putting all your colour in there. Some colour pencil artists don't use pencils at all, they'll just go straight into colour pencils. But you want to get yourself a really good pencil that you're comfortable using. This is a, a Mars Stedler uh, Technique, it's a, a clutch pencil. Um, I'd always wanted one of these clutch pencils uh, and they're very very good. Uh, in fact this one has a, a little sharpener on the top there, I don't know if you can see that little hole, uh, you just take the lead out and put it in and twist it round and that sharpens it. Um, a lot of people swear by these um, pencils because you, do, you don't have to sharpen them all the time, they give a, you know, you've got a constant point for getting into really really detailed areas. Uh, and then the other pencils that I use are the Faber-Castell uh, 9000 series, the um, the Derwent graphic pencil and Derwent do other ranges of pencils as well like this one here that Derwent call it the, the Onyx, this is like they're really dark uh, they do some sketch and some water soluble pencils as well but um, the pencil is it's quite important that you have a really good pencil that you enjoy using uh, and that you're comfortable with uh, next is the dry blenders okay so these are like um, they're just the, the binding agent that uh, makes up the, the color pencils and it, it obviously has no pigment in it whatsoever so you have these this one here is um, by Prismacolor uh, then there is one here by Derwent I don't know if you can see that uh, these are just paper blenders. Now a lot of people don't really like using these. They can cause um, a, a little bit of a mess, especially whenever you're using colour pencil. Uh, a lot of people prefer using these on just graphite drones. Um, but it is there. It is an option if you wanted to use it. And then this is another blender here by uh, Lyra, I think it's pronounced. But there's lots of different ones. Actually, there's one from um, Karen, da uh, yeah, Karen Dash in the Luminance set as well, which is on the review of the the Karen Dash pencil set that I've done. So you can go across and check that blender out as well. But blenders are very, very important. And then leading into the blender, if you didn't want to use those, then you can use like a, a solvent-based blender. Now this one is actually says that I have it in this little container. Uh, and what do you need to use on this is like a a little nylon brush something that you're not going to use your paints with um, really because once you start using the, the zest it I think it really you know I'm no watercolor expert but I think it starts destroying the the bristles so it's probably best that you get like a cheap brush uh, and use it whenever you're blending the the, the color pencil pigment in okay so the Next thing, and this isn't really absolutely essential, but it is something that I uh, think is important whenever I'm doing my colour pencil art, is white gel pens. Now, um, everybody that uses colour pencil knows that getting white on, uh, on your artwork is incredibly difficult. You can either leave the page white, um, but that's hard working around. Colour pencils aren't exactly opaque or anything like that. The, the, the whitest white that you can get in colour pencils is probably the Caran Dash or the Derwent uh, Chinese white. So a lot of colour pencil artists turn to these uh, gel pens. I've got a few of these. This, this one's the Signal, uh, the Uniball Signal. Uh, this one here is called the uh, Jelly Roll. Um, this one here oh it's a, it's a, a Pilot. It's called now they all have their own unique abilities, like the, the Signal has a slightly, um, I'm not sure if you can see that, it has a slightly thicker nib as opposed to this one here, 
which is much finer and so it's obviously going to give you a little bit more detailed uh, ability and then finally um, whenever you're doing your erasers and stuff like that uh, a lot of people use a drafting brush now I don't have a drafting brush I, I've just got this uh, old paintbrush uh, and I use that because when you're if you're erasing a mistake or you are taking lifting bits of colour off if you put your hand on the page and you're rubbing it across you're getting the oils from your hand onto the page uh, and that's going to cause you problems later on it's not going to that particular part of the page won't accept the, the pigment from some of the colour pencils and all the rest of it or your hands will leave dirty marks which won't come off so it's quite important that you get one of these uh, a paint brush a lot of people use makeup brushes you know the the, the big bushy makeup brushes that uh, women use for uh, I've putting foundation on or whatever because uh, they're really soft so they're really ideal for that type of thing um, or then you've got the drafting brush I'll put a picture up of that so if anybody's not too sure what a drafting brush is or in my case I've just got this old paintbrush anyway guys that's it uh, thanks very much for watching this video and thanks very much for all the comments and things that you've left in the past and uh, I really appreciate all the support you've given me um, I look forward to watching or to seeing you all again in the next video. The next video I'm going to do is, um, I think I'm going to be doing a review video next uh, on the one of the Derwent pencils. So look forward to that. And then after that I'll probably be doing the Caran Dash uh, Neo Color uh, Water Soluble Crayons. Anyway, thanks very much for watching guys. Look forward to seeing you all again next time. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments section. Or you can go across to colorpencilreviews.com. Uh, you can check out my blog, leave any questions over there and yeah, all the links to my Facebook and Instagram and Ardorino and all these other places. Uh, you can find them on colourpencilreviews.com or I'll put them in this comment section down below um, or the description box down below, sorry. Uh, so you can just click on the link and go across to those. All the best, thanks very much guys and see you all again soon. Bye.